Now, talking of moving house, lottery winner Michael Carroll has finally sold his wrecked property in Norfolk for, wait for it, £600,000 less than it cost him. Yes, you heard right. He bought the swanky house in Swaffham when he won £9.7 million on the lottery eight years ago. But years of wild parties left it trashed. Natalie Gray has the full story. The Essex travel agent who's bought Michael Carroll's party palace may have got a bargain. But boy, has he got his work cut out. The house in Swaffham has been completely trashed. I think it's probably one of the most notorious and um, unusual properties we sold for a long, long time. Uh, the condition of it was horrendous. And this is why. The 27-year-old former bin man let it go to rack and ruin after eight years of drug fueled wild parties. He was the neighbour from hell, using his garden as a racetrack day and night. And yet once, it was his dream home. A mansion he could barely believe he was lucky enough to own. There's been small fires inside the property, staircases extremely rickety, and uh, not a good idea to go up it. Um, and I don't think there's a pane of glass left in the property either. And uh, the swimming pool, that's in a disastrous state. It's actually quite sad to see it. Michael Carroll paid £340,000 for the five-bedroom home and splashed out a further 400000 on an extension, pool, jacuzzi and refurbishments. But now it's sold for a dismal £142,000. But apparently he's happy. Uh, in fact, it's the happiest I've seen him this year um, because it was a real millstone round his neck. He was getting all sorts of problems with it. But what will he do with the money? Well, he's going to take a holiday. He's, uh, in fact, he's at Peterborough today getting a passport for his daughter. They're going to Spain for a week. He's going to buy him his girlfriend a new car, um, and uh, he's going to have a new kitchen, a new boiler put in in the house, and um, he's uh, then going to invest some in an internet betting business. Michael Carroll may have frittered away his fortune, but he does still own a modest property in Downham Market, where he lives with his girlfriend Gemma and their baby daughter. It's estimated it's going to cost £150,000 to make the Grange grand again. That and an awful lot of TLC. The Colchester travel agent who's taken on the house specialises in holidays to Dubai. He might need one himself after taking on this venture. Natalie Gray, Anglia News, Swaffham. Ouch, that's a lot of money to lose. You're watching Anglia tonight. The mother of an Essex schoolboy killed by a falling tree branch is suing the National Trust for £300,000. 11-year-old Daniel Mullinger died when the branch fell on him at Felbrick Hall in Norfolk in June 2007. The family claim the Trust did not check the ancient beech tree properly. At Daniel's inquest, the coroner recorded a verdict of accidental death. People living and working on part of the River Colne in Colchester say they're being plagued by a sewage-like smell. Anglian Water says it doesn't believe it's coming from the nearby sewer, but the stench has still got people worried about water quality. Lorna Ramsey reports. Lunchtime at the Quayside pub at The Hive. A chance to take time out from the stresses of work. But there's one thing people who work around here just can't get away from. It stinks and it's like rotten, rotten garbage. I don't think I'll say it on camera, really. <laughs> it smells like what it is. Sometimes it's totally unbearable and my customers get put off by it. At the moment, the tide's in and it's been raining this morning, so the smell isn't too bad. But local people say that when the temperature rises, so does the stink. And they're pointing the finger at the sewage works just up the road. But Anglian Water say it's not them. In a statement, they told us there is nothing abnormal with the way the works are operating. We believe the main source of the odour to be the river estuary, particularly during the warmer months where the river level is lower and some of the banks are exposed. They also say the treatment works are fully compliant with water quality and environmental health standards. But that doesn't stop Colchester Oyster Fishery testing their shellfish rigorously. They're based six miles from the sewage works in Mersey Island. But possible contamination of the coal and oyster beds is a constant worry. 
The industry is quite concerned um, throughout the UK about the decline in water quality uh, and the amount of time and money we're having to spend on tests to test the uh, shellfish to make sure that they're safe to eat. Colchester's oyster industry goes back to Roman times. So the thought of anything affecting the quality of these waters really gets up people's noses. Lorna Ramsey, Anglia News, East Mersey. Motorists parking illegally in just one Ipswich street have been fined over £50,000 in a year. New figures show traffic wardens issued almost 1,900 tickets in Fonero Road last year. Police officers and Ipswich Borough Council are currently targeting illegal and inconsiderate parking in the town. Sport now and an early taste of cup football for the region's league teams in the Carling Cup. Ipswich and Colchester both face away ties with Exeter and Hereford respectively. Norwich host Gillingham, Peterborough entertain Rotherham, while Southend face Bristol City. And our championship managers are taking their game seriously. But well, we want to win the game, it's going to be tough. Uh, but obviously as well, with the injuries we have, we've got to be careful with Saturday's game in mind. Because we, we are struggling for numbers, it's, it's, I've never known anything like it. It's a tough game, it's a, it's a tough game. They'll come to Norwich and... Uh, and enjoy the surroundings and uh, and the expectancy levels all on us, which was there last year. So it's nothing new for us when we play a, a if you want to call them a lower league team. Now the final of the FA Cup took place just three months ago at Wembley, but this season's competition actually kicks off this weekend. Yes, the extra prelim round is the starting point for many junior clubs, with a handful across our region taking part for the very first time, including from one from West Suffolk, as Donovan Blake reports. Just kiss it. <laughs> the trophy for football's oldest knockout competition, with arguably the youngest team starting out this season in Bury St Edmunds. Just five years after being formed, Team Bury are bracing themselves for their first ever FA Cup tie. A real thrill for the players, most of whom are students at the town's West Suffolk College. I think the average age of the squad is 17. Um, we've got one 19-year-old, um, there's a 16, 17 and 18, all college lads. So, uh, yeah, quite possibly the youngest ever team to, to be in the FA Cup. Visitors to Ram Meadow, the ground which Team Berry shares with hosts Berrytown Football Club, also had their moments with the famous trophy. The Football Association hosts many events with the Cup on show throughout the year. So there's one question everyone wanted the answer to. Is this a replica or is it the authentic one? Well, Donovan, I can tell your viewers and all the people of Bury St Edmunds and here at Team Berry today, that is the very cup that Chelsea lifted in May. The Team Berry players have had their hands on the cup today, but the likelihood of them holding it when it really matters in May next year are very slim. But how far do they think they can go in the oldest cup competition in the world? The realistic aim for any long league team is to get to the first round proper. Yeah. It's six games, though. Do you think you could win that? Um... Yeah, I believe we can. We're all good. I think we're good enough players. Good bond. Never know. You never know, do you? Ram Meadow will host Team Berry's big game on Saturday against Amptill Town of Bedfordshire. It's one of 37 ties involving at least one of the region's teams in the extra preliminary round. All hoping to stay connected with the Cup for as long as possible. Donovan Blake, Anglian News, Berry St Edmunds. I bet. Well, I'm sorry.